Hey everyone, today we'll be wrapping up the Misfire issue in my 1992 Acura Legend. Stay tuned. So in our last, I guess we'll call it an episode, we traced the Misfire to a clogged fuel injector in cylinder number two. And we replaced that injector with an OEM injector that had been ultrasonically cleaned and flow tested. The legend ran much smoother, but there was still some stumbling. And I suspected that the catalytic converter had been damaged by the misfire. Here's a description of the catalytic converter's purpose from the service manual, which is probably enough info for the average DIYer. Basically, the catalytic converter takes the exhaust gases and converts them into less environmentally harmful emissions. There are several ways to diagnose whether a catalytic converter is not doing its job and, in our case, causing the car to run rough. One of the easiest methods for the DIYer is to use an infrared thermometer to check the catalytic converter's inlet and outlet temperatures. So I've warmed up the car and I'm using the E-Tech CD800 infrared thermometer to check the outlet temperature of the catalytic converter. The cat's outlet temp should be higher than its inlet temp. I have the thermometer about six to eight inches away and the laser is pointed directly at the cat itself, not the heat shield. The outlet temp is hovering somewhere between 95 and 115 degrees and it's not looking good so far. Next, I'm checking the inlet temperature and it appears to be somewhere between 130 and 140 degrees. So it looks like our cat is not working efficiently. I decided to go ahead and pull the catalytic converter so I can take a closer look at it. I have the car in the garage with the front end on jack stands and I've elevated the front of the car as high as my floor jack will allow. I've also left the jack in place as a secondary support. Based on my limited experience stripping or snapping exhaust fasteners, it's usually a good idea to spray the fasteners with a penetrating oil such as PB Blaster or Croil, even if it seems like the fasteners should easily break loose. Letting the penetrating oil soak in overnight seems to work really well. I personally like using a trick I learned a long time ago which consists of using a torch and beeswax. My oxyacetylene torch was out of gas so I reached for the TS-8000 with MAP Pro gas. The first nut was fairly easy to remove with the 14 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Things got a little bit trickier though. Since I don't work on exhaust very often, I don't have a good set of swivel sockets that probably would have made short work of the remaining two nuts. So I had to improvise. I happen to have a 3 8 swivel adapter, so I was able to use a torch and beeswax and my impact with the 14 millimeter socket to remove the other lower nut. The upper nut was not so easy. I had to actually separate the rear exhaust heat shield so I could reach it with the torch and beeswax and a 14 millimeter socket on a breaker bar. With the rear fasteners removed, I turned my attention to the front fasteners. Again, the torch and beeswax work great in combination with a 14 millimeter box wrench and a 12 millimeter socket on a breaker bar to remove the lowest fastener. I used a 14 millimeter box wrench and a 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench on the upper fastener on the left. Finally, to remove the cat, I pushed it towards the rear of the car so it could clear the front gasket.
Once I had the cat off the car, I shook it to see if I could hear any broken catalyst material. Instead, I heard a liquid swishing sound. Not a good sign. Based on what I've read, unburned fuel in the cat can cause the catalyst material to heat up higher than normal and melt. One thing I did not remember before removing the cat is a Scotty Kilmer video I'd watched several years ago where he mentioned adding one gallon of lacquer thinner to 10 gallons of gas in the fuel tank. He would then drive the car for about 150 to 200 miles or run the engine at 2500 RPM for a half hour to see if the exhaust flow improves. I wanted to give Scotty Kilmer's other method a shot before declaring the cat toast. This method includes soaking the cat in a liquid laundry detergent solution overnight. So I set the front side of the cat down in a bucket and poured a little liquid laundry detergent down the cat. Probably not the best idea since concentrated detergent will be hard to remove later. Anyway, I proceeded to pour boiling hot water down the cat until the bucket was full and let it sit for about 24 hours. After the 24 hour soaking period, I flushed the cat initially with hot water, then ran water from a garden hose through it and let it dry on its end for 24 hours. Anticipating that this cat was indeed shot, I already had a used OEM cat on hand. Here you can see I shined a bright LED light through the outlet side of the cat and then through the inlet side of the cat to check the results of the cleaning process. There appears to be some damage to the original cat's honeycomb material, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. Before installing the replacement cat, I replaced the flange gasket on the rear exhaust. I simply used a flathead screwdriver to remove the gasket, then cleaned up the surface with a small wire brush. The front gasket also needs to be replaced, so I pried between the gasket and the exhaust with a flathead screwdriver and gradually worked it free. To install the cat, I slid the studs on the rear of the cat into the rear exhaust, then pushed the cat towards the rear of the car to clear the exhaust gasket at the front. Lastly, I just reinstalled the fasteners and the heat shield. The torque spec for the rear nuts is 25 pound feet, and there is a recommended torque sequence also. The torque spec for the front cap nuts is 16 pound feet. Let's take a look at the cat inlet and outlet temperatures. It appears we're currently at around 220 degrees on the outlet side. The original cat's temp was 115 degrees on the outlet side. The inlet temp is around 160 degrees. So it looks like our temps are much more in line with what's considered normal. One last thing I wanted to mention here is to make sure you recycle your used cat since it contains precious metals that are worth some cash. I received $48 for my cat from a local scrapyard, but I probably could have gotten more money if I checked around online.